Welcome to Business Nigeria. I'm YMC Lanre Ido. Uh, of course, the Nigerian oil output is in focus today, but just before that, let's see what's happening in the global market and also on the continent. Oil prices in international markets seem to be coming to terms with exit of UK from the EU as trade margins start to look up. At the London market, early business deals recorded the price of one barrel of the Brent at $49. The price value showed a jump by more than 1%. For the OPEC basket crude price, studied at $44 a barrel. Also, global oil uh, prices will see the rise on Wednesday as traders poured more money back into the market, which, hit, uh, which was hit by the initial shock of Britain's vote to leave the EU, while a potential oil workers' strike in Norway and crisis in Venezuela also provided support. Both benchmarks gained on Tuesday after markets shook off some of the shock from the referendum in Britain. Analysts at the British National Petroleum said different asset classes are highly correlated and the bounce back in the oil price reflects the broader move seen in equities and foreign exchange markets. Now, Standard Chartered said it expected oil prices to return to $50 per barrel rapidly as the Brexit referendum's impact on demand was limited. Despite that, some bankers say the knock-on effects from Britain's EU exit vote could continue for some time. In Nigeria, oil production has risen to about 1.9 million barrels per day from 1.6 million BPD due to ongoing repairs to the damaged pipelines. And militants who say they want a greater share of Nigeria's oil wealth to go to the Niger Delta region have carried out attacks on pipelines in the last few months. Nigerian OPEC member was Africa's top oil producer until these attacks pushed it behind Angola. And spokesperson for the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Garba Dean Mohammed, said production had fallen from 2.2 million barrels per day at the start of the year to as low as 1.6 million barrels. All right, let's put some more perspective into this. I'm joined now in the studio by energy expert Alex Osunde, many thanks uh, for your time. Before we Thank go you. into Nigeria yes, proper, all right now, how much of impact of the Brexit do you see coming on oil price in the coming uh, months? Well, Brexit has been uh, bad for the financial, the world financial system, uh, at least temporarily. And what you've seen in the oil market has been um, an indirect impact. Uh, yes, it is possible that Britain's oil industry could change um, over the coming years because of this vote. Okay, indirect impact. How do indirect you Indirect really? because it's through the financial markets. Um, what happens is that when dollar firms up, um, oil prices tend to go down. And what you've seen in the past... Um, one week or so had been that play largely. Okay, we saw the dollar gaining really. Yes, okay. yes. And then as the dollar weakened in the past few days, you've also seen the oil prices re, you know, uh, rebounding. Rebounding. Now, the rebound has been across the various grades. So the heavy crudes, for example, are more likely to jump much higher because of the problems you mentioned in Venezuela which is the major producer of the heavy crude. Heavy crude, yeah. And um, the impact is going to be less felt in the lighter crudes uh, because Saudi Arabia, you know, and then the rebound in Nigeria and, and, and other countries, you're likely to see some improvements there. But generally, uh, what is coming to fore is that, as you also mentioned, commodities, equities, currencies, they are all related. And more so now because hedge funds and, you know, various investors and players in the market tend to move funds um, as their appetites dictate, you know, hunting for bargains, hunting for uh, what we call arbitrage gains. And so it's really uh, an interplay of those forces um, rather than the more fundamental interplay of supply and demand. I am more likely to be foresighted and to say, look, let's look more at the future because that's where you really see the interplay of oil, uh, supply and demand. Okay, should Nigeria be, be, be happy about this uh, trend at this time? 
Well, you know, I mean, whether Nigeria or any of the oil, uh, OPEC um, countries, players, you know, um, I tell you, OPEC is losing its influence. Really? Quite quickly. But more importantly for Nigeria, if we continue on this trajectory, it may indeed be very, very um, uh, negative because we need to improve on investments in the oil industry. We need also to improve on security and other uh, infrastructure that surround the industry. Uh, and so it's very important that the government speeds up its activity in trying to negotiate uh, with the uh, Niger Delta uh, Avengers and other this, you know, interested uh, uh, parties so that we can have more calm, we can have more uh, activity and production, and therefore, you know, investors can come in, you know, most of the oil majors can, uh, you know, put more money into investing. Because the, the problem is that if we don't invest now, down the road, we're going to see even more problems, more crises. All right, crises. The, the Niger Delta militancy, Niger Delta Avengers militancy has affected Nigeria uh, more than, uh, we, we can say now, we have lost huge production level to Angola uh, as we have it now. What are the steps to recover from our losses, really? Because we, we, from 2.2 million barrels per day to 1.6 million barrels per day, mm. that's a huge loss. Well, on the face of it, um, you, you see, you, you have to worry about not just deliveries that are likely to be made in, in, in the short term, but also future deliveries. Uh, and, and so it's, it's very important that we uh, repair the damage infrastructure, that we, you know, they, 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 we do more of the marketing and getting more buyers. Because don't forget, most of our traditional buyers, the U.S., for example, um, have cooled off a bit. And so we need to either replace or encourage them. Um, you know, so I'm more concerned about the, uh, the, 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 the restructuring of that uh, marketing framework and, and, and this, the, the, the effects on our cash flows. Restructuring of that uh, marketing framework or looking away from that area because we've seen what the oil industry, uh, how much the oil industry has affected Nigeria because of our reliance on that sector. Yes, you know, I mean, you could look east and we have done that. Uh, but don't forget that there are other players. Okay. And so with Iran coming in, you know, it's, it's already in, um, you know, uh, other players are, are getting more um, active. Saudi Arabia is, 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 is going on all, you know, is pumping on all cylinders. So also uh, Iran. And, and yes, of course. Uh, and, and so you, you will see in a situation where India, China, are going to have more options. And, and yes, we are negotiating with uh, China for financing that's related to the oil industry and all that. So we can totally um, look out. That's what you're yes, saying. Yes, yes. Okay. You, you need... Uh, when you have situations like this, you need to have options. You need to be able to diversify. Um, and it's good to have new friends, uh, but I think that having the old friends play more would be a good way to, to go forward. To go forward. All right, talking about looking at um, options, developed economies have found alternatives to crude oil, really. Many of them hitting on solar energy mm. and shale oil. And you're saying that OPEC is beginning to lose its uh, uh, relevancy, if I may use that word. Uh, but will OPEC nations continue to sell crude oil with uh, these discoveries? Yes, I mean, oil is, is going to play a part a good part of the energy story for a long time. time. Okay, but renewable energy is definitely uh, a strong force. Um, gas is a strong force. Luckily for Nigeria, I mean, gas is an area that we can really play big. And um, I, I'm sure that the government knows this and the industry knows this. We are, of course, we've been through the LNG and, 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 and other gas projects. We, we are doing more in this area, but that's the future too. Um, so yeah, I mean it, it's 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 a done uh, story that, and a done deal that OPEC certainly has lost a lot of influence, um, and they've now agreed that they don't even want to put limits 
uh, animals. So, I mean, when you start, when a cartel starts to behave that way, way. then you have a problem. A problem. Um, and that problem is, is what you're seeing. Um, they've, you know, I mean, the, 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 the OPEC has lost most of its revenues by close to half since, um, uh, say, the beginning of, of, uh, of this whole crisis, when oil prices fell from uh, about 100 or so to uh, even lower than the 40, 40. That, that, that we had seen of recent. You know, so that is really huge. Uh, for, for most of the OPEC countries, that's been a, a budget nightmare. Um, even for the likes of uh, Saudi Arabia, as you've seen, you know, I mean, that's led to uh, privatization of, of some of their oil assets. Um, they've lost, uh, uh, you know, more, more, than, more than half, indeed, of their, of their uh, revenue stream. Okay. We are still talking about these alternatives, and I've seen uh, many bigwigs in the oil industry play around different alternatives. But solar energy seems to be one that uh, many of these other countries are keen into. What's happening in Nigeria? Well, solar is, 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 is great, um, especially for uh, the tropics and for subtropical uh, areas. I know that in, 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 in places in the Middle East, in uh, in America, in the U.S., you know, you have a, a lot of emphasis on this. Um, in Nigeria, there have been a few. Uh, there's, I know there's a project, uh, you know, uh, starting out in, in Kaduna. Um, and uh, there are other uh, projects that are in, in, in process of, uh, uh, you know, being implemented or at least in conception stages. Uh, so that's def definitely the way to go. Um, Small-scale solar panels and all that are quite popular all popular, around. Popular, so, exactly. Uh, but what we are talking about here are uh, the, uh, the more large-scale type. And that requires a lot of um, uh, land. Uh, it requires a lot of investment. Uh, but like you said, I mean, that's uh, for, for, for a sun-blessed uh, you know, area uh, where you have a lot of sunlight, most of most year round, uh, that would be a good way to go. I mean, Nigeria uh, is looking at is, has been talking about diversification from this uh, revenue earner, which is uh, failing us at the moment, the mm -hmm. oil industry. So, what is stopping us from taking that up in a large scale? What is stopping the government, really? Well, well nothing. Again, you you find that you you and I keep going back to government, government. I mean. It doesn't have to be that way. I mean, we need to get the private sector, sector to drive most of the investment that we have to do. And, and frankly, there are funds out there from outside, um, both multilateral, bilateral, and even commercial sources that are likely to be interested in projects uh, in the solar area. Okay, let's take us back to Brexit now and Nigeria one way or the other is uh, in, a, in a very long relationship with the UK mm. when it comes uh, to this. Now, what are the significant benefits to be secured even in the long run? Because uh, the global oil market mm. have, have been, uh, will have a pro-Brexit, uh, post-Brexit impact mm. uh, stage, certainly. So what are the long-term uh, uh, benefits that we should be looking at? Well, you know, I mean, the, the benefit that we, we could derive from uh, Britain leaving the EU, EU. Um, is very, very limited. Uh, yes, we, like I, I, I posted on my Facebook page, I mean, we're getting back our traditional trading partner. Partner. Um, you know, and so we can do business more or less direct. Uh, and, you know, okay, so you, that we before do you go for that, were you in support of the leave? Well, you know, I mean, for me, it's, it, it's, it's a, a drawback to the 50s, really. I mean, uh, if, you, if, you, if you listen to what um, Sir Winston Churchill said in 53 uh, in the House of Commons, what he was saying, and, I, and that's on my Facebook page, he was saying that, look, we are with Europe, but we are not of Europe. Europe. So, in other words, um, you know, we... We are not really part of them. If you gave us a choice to be in Europe and in the open sea, we would choose the open sea. sea. You know, so what they were doing with this vote, frankly, was retro. They were going back to what they always felt. 
you know, so is, is Nigeria going to benefit immensely from this? I don't think so. Um, I think that even Nigerians and, and minorities uh, in that country and in Europe itself will, will suffer uh, from what has happened. Um, access to the UK through uh, EU uh, citizenship will be now limited. Limited. Yeah, and then there will be internal schism uh, within the UK itself because the, the Scots are already ready to, uh, to have another vote to lead. Uh, the Northern Ireland, uh, Northern Ireland Irish are likely to follow suit. You know, so you're going to have some of these things. Some people are even saying that London may well want to uh, have an independent enclave of, 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 of some sort. So really, it's not um, something that we should uh, applaud at all. Applaud at all. So you, if you would forecast, do you think it's going to be negatives for a long time? Yes, it's going to be negative for a long time because uncertainty is, is bad for trading relationships, is bad for the markets, is bad for investment. Uh, and the British oil industry is going to suffer immensely from this. Well, they were already in decommissioning stage, you know, uh, and um, that's going to accelerate. And that means that, you know, infrastructure and things like that are going to uh, be a problem and then costs would go up. And uh, what you're going to have is that investments are going to slow. Slow. Uh, and so for the British industry, it's just not also very good. Not a very good one. They're taking us back to uh, the OPEC now. We have one of our own there as the OPEC chief. Mm -hmm. Now, what strategic moves uh, can Nigeria make in the light of our own uh, being there at a time like this? Well, in view of the new um, mutual understanding, very little really. Um, the market is going to increasingly speak, uh, as the German Chancellor An An Angela Merkel. Merkel said, you know, let the market do the punishing, let the market do the speaking. So what you're seeing is beyond any uh, OPEC Director General or Secretary General, sorry, and uh, beyond any OPEC uh, mechanism. And as we've seen earlier, uh, and we discussed earlier, the, 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 the limits on production and all that are more or less collapsed. So there's very little. Um, yes, you could encourage cooperation and, and all that, but, you know, national interest above everything else. So everybody is looking out for his own. Um, the Saudis are not going to listen. And so, you know, you're because going to have Because they have refused issues. to cut uh, yes, output supply. Yes. But luckily there are, you know, um, pockets of crisis, as you have already highlighted, in Venezuela, in Norway, in Iraq, in, you know, in France, and, you know, so you're going to have situation, even in the U.S. itself, maybe, you know, inventories are coming down. And yeah. so, pro you know, prospects for oil prices are actually upward. Okay, so that is salutary because, you know, you what you're going to see is that demand supply matching um, will be, you know, very favorable for rising oil prices. oil prices. All right, just before I let you go, if you were to strategize for President Muhammadu Buhari on how to handle this issue of militancy in the Niger Delta, what would you be telling him? Well, first, there's, there needs to be a reorientation of government approach. Uh, we should um, not always think that you can use force, although they are using, you know, force. Uh, it's important that it's not a war to know that it's not a war that we can win in a conventional sense. Right. Uh, and so I think that the move by the Petroleum uh, Minister of State, you know, to try and encourage dialogue, to try and encourage infrastructure uh, investments, to try and encourage, you know, uh, education uh, has been in the right direction. And, and really, I think that if there's anything that the Buhari government has done right, uh, it's been uh, its peak for um, the Pet Petroleum Minister of State. I, I think that the body language, the uh, mentality, and the way he approaches this, uh, this job has been helpful to the government. Many thanks, Alex Osundi, Energy Experts, for being on Business, uh, business Nigeria. It's okay, a pleasure welcome. having you. You're welcome, Genesee.
All right, now looking at other stories now. The Nigerian Stock Exchange has facilitated investment of $4 billion into the nation's capital market in the last 10 years. Trade data from the exchange showed that the investments were made in equities and bonds. And it was revealed that major investment flows came in 2007, 2008, 2013, and 14. The years 2007 and 2008 were boom years for the Nigerian stock market before the bubble burst in 20, 2009. Investors traded securities worth 2.4 trillion naira in 2007 and 2.08 uh, trillion naira in 2008. And following the global financial meltdown of 2008, the value of trade fell to 686 billion naira in 2009. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed concern over a decision to float the Naira. Speaking to business leaders, the president said uh, he did not like the returns he got from the Central Bank of Nigeria on the call for devaluation of the Naira. And this comes after Nigeria's uh, Central Bank last week allowed the market to determine the rate of the Naira to the dollar, which was earlier pegged at 197 Naira to one dollar. The move was to alleviate chronic currency shortages to, that have depressed growth in Africa's biggest economy. Buhari had consistently refused to abandon an official exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar, arguing that th doing so would worsen inflation. But analysts say the devaluation of the Naira would bring back investors' confidence and foreign companies had found it increasingly difficult to do business in the country. Workers in the Undo State Public Service have again refused to bow to pressure from the state government to call off their four-week-old strike over non-payment of five-month salary arrears. The workers deliberated for hours with the government, after which they said the strike would be called off only if the government comes up with proper negotiations. The state's head of service, Toi Akikotu, expressed optimism that government will come up with a solution. We have our own information about the revenue of the state government. They presented some information too. We are unable to fully reconcile those information. So we want to preempt the state government. But all we are out for is that our salaries must be paid up to date. The state government has not told us they are unable to, they have, they have told us, but they have been unable to prove it to us that they cannot pay us up to date. Government has decided to make some payments now uh, because of the finances available and within the next few days because the initiation, the process to get our fund that is still with Abuja, that is the, uh, the refund we are expecting. We are expecting the fund within the next few days. All right, now let's see what the, what the exchange rate is like across the continent today. Great subject to change. That's Business Nigeria for today. Many thanks for watching. I am YMC Lanredo. Yeah, thank you. Do have a nice day.